Welcome back to Tactical Accountants. Today we're gonna to discuss the inevitable result of being quarantined at home while continuing to earn a disposable income due to extended tax season, and that is modifying our guns. This is the WBP Fox uh, that was featured on the channel not too long ago in the unboxing video. If you've watched that one, you'll surely notice that it doesn't look the same way it did when I took it out of the original packaging. So today I'm gonna to discuss some of the first upgrades I made to this rifle, as well as comparing the weight of said upgrades um, and just discuss my first impressions. So let's take it from there. The furniture on this rifle has all been replaced with Magpul products. So starting with the grip, um, not sure if you can tell on camera, it's very hard to tell even in person uh, unless it's in direct sunlight, but this is the Magpul plum color that they offer on AK Furniture. To illustrate the difference, this is the factory black plastic grip. So I've always been a big fan of the Russian plum. I knew that they offered the standard MOE grip in plum. I was very pleasantly surprised to find one vendor online. I believe it was Centerfire Guns that had this MOE K2 in plum. So the difference between the MOE and the MOE K2 is the K2 has a more vertical uh, grip angle. And it also has this little hump here to help you consistently index the top of your hand. I'm a big fan of these grips. I have them on all my rifles. Again, this is the factory grip that comes with the WBP Fox. If you compare it to the Magpul, you can tell that this one fills your palm a lot better. Uh, this is quite skinny if you're coming from any kind of AR with an aftermarket grip. Weight-wise, the MOE K2 grip and this factory grip are pretty much a wash. Both weigh just under three ounces. Uh, stick around until the end of the video and there's going to be a standard accountant type spreadsheet showing the weight differences between the factory and upgraded parts on this rifle, if anybody's interested in that sort of thing. Uh, to me, one of the big benefits of the AK relative to the AR pattern of rifle is that all of the operating hardware is contained in this receiver here. And that means that you can have a folding stock. The Magpul Zukov does fold. Just to press this button here. Turn the rifle here to show. Folds right up. When you compare it to this factory stock, on the factory one, obviously the length of pull is the length of pull. This is as long as the stock gets. With the Zukov in the most collapsed position, it is actually a little bit shorter via this latch back here has an extendable length. You have a few different positions between shortest and longest. And then when we lay the factory stock back on, you can see that difference. One other nice thing about the Zukov stock is the availability of these cheek risers from Magpul. Uh, you can get them in three different heights, a quarter inch, a half inch, and three quarters of an inch. Uh, these just snap in. There you go. Unfortunately, it's not all good news. Weight-wise, you take a little bit of a hit with the Zukov. It weighs a little over 15 ounces compared to under 13 ounces for the factory stock. Uh, for the functionality you get though, that's a worthwhile trade-off to me. Because the WBP Fox has this extension here by the trunnion, uh, so you can use that uh, optional bedel optic rail, the Magpul Zukov, or any other furniture for that matter that's for a standard AK rifle, does not fit without modification. So if you look very closely at these two idiot marks here, you can see where I went too far with the Dremel. But if I do say so myself, at the risk of tooting my own horn, um, it could be worse. It is still very solid. Like there's no play whatsoever. None of this uh, cut away section, thankfully, seems to have any impact on the structural integrity of the stock, especially how it mounts to the receiver. Um, but just be warned that you will need to take a Dremel to this section, straight line, this section, straight line, straight line here, straight line here, and then this little uh, round part. Unfortunately, you do not get to use this better top rail uh, just because it has this big seating surface on the bottom. So I was not willing to cut away more of the Zukov to get this to fit. 
Moving forward, we have more Magpul Plum. This is the MOE AKM handguard. Uh, note that I did say AKM and not AK. Magpul does make two versions of this handguard. This one, the AKM, is meant to accommodate rifles like the WBP Fox with this front sling loop. If you got the AK version, it would protrude too far and you would need to drum all that away. So if you have a rifle like this one, make sure you get the right version. Uh, it's a nice handguard. You have these M-Lock slots here as well as along the bottom. If you look through, you see how reflective that is. That's because there's a pretty stout metal heat shield underneath. The bad news is that there is a weight penalty for having that heat shield. This handguard weighs almost double what the factory wooden one does. This is around three and a half ounces. The Magpul is around six and a half. The Magpul handguard goes up higher. If you compare it even uh, in terms of how much of this Polish Eagle Crest you can see, it's definitely higher than the stock handguard. That's a good thing though, because moving on to the next upgrade, we have the Ultimac M1B optic rail. The Ultimac seems very highly regarded in the AK world um, as an optic mounting platform. One con though is that it's known to get pretty hot. And with the factory handguard not going up so high, if you get a little ambitious and you're doing mag dumps, uh, you could burn your hand. So the fact that this mag pull goes higher is definitely a good thing. With the Ultimac, what you do is you actually replace the entire gas tube and top handguard, which you can see here. That's the Magpul Plum. Uh, took it off just as soon as the Ultimac came in. You replace that entire assembly. So the Ultimac is only around one ounce heavier than the factory gas tube and upper handguard. Um, it's around six ounces versus five ounces. So I'll take one ounce for a rock solid red dot mount. As for the optic, this is the Bushnell TRS 25 red dot. I think these are pretty much as cheap as you can go on a red dot site without it being airsoft quality. Because this uh, Picatinny mount is integral to the site, this is the absolute lowest sitting red dot I have found yet. That's even compared to this Holosun that I adore, that I have on a few of my rifles. Uh, if you compare them here, I know they look pretty similar, but because with the Holosun you have a low riser to install with it, it does sit a little bit higher than the Bushnell. They both co-witness, that was very important for me. Um, the Ultimax sits very low, so with a low red dot, you get a sight picture through the optic with your irons that's almost completely uh unobtruded the bushnell has less of a blue tint than the hollow sun i understand that that could be because the bushnell has much worse battery life so the laser uh, has to be stronger to make up for that lack of blue tint but looking through the bushnell i'll try to show it here with the dot turned off you pick up the irons like the red dot isn't there at all right now the Red dot is turned off. So you see the front sight there. You can absolutely co-witness looking through that rear notch. There are 11 brightness settings on this dot. That's number four, plenty bright. If we turn that up to the maximum, 11, it's like staring into the sun. It's really remarkable how bright this red dot gets. We'll see how it holds up to the AK recoil and also the heat of the Ultimax for the brightness, uh, for how low it sits and for the lack of blue tint or any kind of distortion. For the price, I think you could do a lot worse. All in for weight. When this rifle was brand new with the wooden furniture, it weighed just under seven pounds. With this Magpul furniture and the Ultimax, it weighs 7.4. And because this TRS-25 is under four ounces, uh, all in right now, as you see the rifle, it's 7.6 pounds. So thanks for tuning in. That's my WBP Fox after its first round of upgrades. Not planning to do much else to this rifle other than put rounds through it. Um, I know a lot of you are in the same boat as me. Unfortunately, that's out of our hands, but we'll get through this, guys. So thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you next time.